All right, ladies and gentlemen, all right. So, first of all, I'm going to go over these comments, and I really do appreciate them. It helps me to understand where you're at, and it helps me to understand, um, you know, what I need to do to teach uh, these particular things that we're talking about, okay? It helps me as much as it does help you, so I'm going to get into that and a little bit here so I want to cover this one particular question or topic or whatever you want to call it what is the difference between the rapture and the second coming alright so David Jeremiah dot org uh, this fellow here he's gonna give us four descriptions if you will of the differences so let's read this this is one of the greatest misconceptions about prophecy the rapture and the second coming are often confused, but they are distinct events with distinct purposes on God's prophetic timeline. All right, enough with the voice. Okay, so here we go. Number one, at the rapture, Jesus will return for his saints. At the second coming, he will return with his saints. Ooh, except that makes no sense at all. All right, so this is what I was talking about the other day, maybe it was yesterday. Try putting some thought into what you're teaching. Try to put some thought into what you believe. All right, so let's say this is what you believe. At the rapture, Jesus returns for his saints. Saints are lifted up, and they go, well, they go to Mars and uh, they get suited with their Superman suits and Spider-Man suits and then they come back on the second coming he returns with the Saints this okay this is gonna be a problem here so after everybody gets fitted with their Superman costumes they come back now everybody that's on earth you're saying that they do they have a chance to be saved? I mean, put some thought into this. While you're up on planet Mars getting suited for your Superman suit, there are people on Earth who are like, where in the heck did Joe Bob go? And Sally, where's Sally at? Well, they're up there on Mars. So is there any chance for those guys that are stuck on Earth any chance at all for them to be saved? Any chance at all for them to repent and be baptized by the Holy Ghost? Now this is important because what you're saying is that this um, resurrection of the dead and the living happens and Jesus is, takes everybody away and what? There's this period of time when there is no saved people on earth, like a zombie apocalypse. Is that what you're saying? Like a zombie world? Where everybody's a zombie. Not just a bunch of people, but everybody. Is that what this says? Is this what happens when you watch too many zombie movies and then you start to incorporate it into your biblical beliefs is that what this is now just think about it and there's there's really no other way to spin this Jesus and everybody that is saved is gone away meanwhile the unsaved are on earth doing what eating dead bodies or eating chasing one another I mean what's going on man is there any chance for them to be saved and why why wouldn't they why wouldn't your chance to be saved be right now and what are you saying if you're unsaved just wait until we're all taken out of here then start believing in Jesus you'll see it for yourself and this is the left behind zombie movie it's not the Bible okay I get I get fired up about this stuff all right, let's go to number two. At the rapture, Jesus will not descend to earth. 
At the second coming he will descend to the Mount of Olives at, as a prelude to his earthly reign. Alright, so that's the same thing, isn't it? Does this make any sense at the rapture? Jesus will not descend to earth. He's going to stay suspended in the air. And then at his second coming, he comes down to Mount of Olives. Okay, so the Mount of Olives reference is... Zechariah 14. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Okay, So we see um, many references in the New Testament about the Mount of Olives none of which is speaking of his return alright so in this is what I've learned is that the New Testament gives a much clearer picture of the end time than the Old Testament alright um, yeah, I'd like to get into this, but I, I don't, you know, it's going to take too much time. So let's go to number three. At the rapture, Jesus will bring a blessing for his saints. At the second coming, he will bring judgment for those who have rejected him. All right, again, put some thought into this. So you're saying that Jesus is going to rapture everybody, both the living and the dead, and then go away. And meanwhile, all those left on earth will have a second opportunity to be saved after the return of Jesus. Which, by the way, is found nowhere in the Bible at all. In fact, Jesus is asked this very simple and straightforward question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, you have to, to, in order to sell this bull butter, you have to convince people that the end of the world is not the end of the world. Alright? I mean, you're basically saying the Bible lies and you're saying Jesus Christ lies. You can't trust the Bible, but we have to listen to these guys that teach this nonsense so you really think about it what are you teaching if you're if you're preaching this to the unsaved people you're telling them hey just wait just wait don't believe yet just wait until Jesus comes and we're all raptured and out of here just like what you watch in Hollywood movies all right and then you know, you'll see a bunch of zombies running around, and then you can start believing and be saved. Because by then you'll know, hey, what's going on here? Right? You, if you can't figure it out now, you wouldn't figure it out in this zombie eclipse movie scenario that you guys are preaching. You got a, you know, you got a chance, an opportunity today for everlasting life. And that is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like God led Moses out of Egypt, gave them a, an escape from the wickedness of Egypt, so also does God give us an escape from this wicked world through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, And so, what in the world are you preaching? Here, Jesus is going to go away, and then there's going to be a period of time when there is uh, nobody saved. Everybody saved is taken out of here. So it's going to be nothing but reprobates. Nothing but people who reject the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the point? You're just going to let them run around like... Uh, it makes no sense at all. But, hey, if this is what you believe, then let, expound upon it. I want to hear you talk about that. That scenario. Because I'm telling you, every, if, when you start talking about that, 
it's going to line up with everything you saw in a zombie movie. Guarantee it. Last one. The rapture could occur at any moment. The second coming will occur seven years later. All right, so again, that's not in the Bible. You're not, I, you know, you're not going to be able to say, oh, hey, look, that's where, that's where that is in the Bible. Let's see. We have to do it this way. Nope. That's not it. No. Nah, no idea. Just making stuff up. Call it seven years later. Uh, Seventy years in Desolations of Jerusalem. That's not it. That's not it. So, what are you talking about, man? Have you even read the Bible? That's not in the Bible. At all. Alright. I can't help you there because it's not in the Bible. Now, let's go back to this one right here and then I'll wrap this up. I want to focus on this guy right here. At the rapture, Jesus will bring a blessing for his saints. <clears throat> what is that anyways? Bring a blessing. Uh, sprinkle some dust on us or something? I, I don't know what that means. But anyways, I mean, it's true, but it's it's underselling what's going to happen. I mean, this not a small thing when he comes. It's a big idea, right? It's a big thing. At the second coming, he will bring judgment for those who have rejected him. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's go this way. Right, let's, for This is for you Donald Trump supporters. Huh? All right, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the first the dead in Christ will rise and then those of us that are alive and remain will be lifted up with them and then the enemy is gathered at our feet all right this is what is called the harvest right the judgment day the day of the Lord it's harvest season so this is the separation between the wheat and the tares. This is the judgment. God is going to judge who is saved and who is not saved. Who is the wheat and who is the tear? God knows. Alright, so when this ha when that judgment is made, then the wrath of God is poured upon the unsaved. Alright? There, and there's going to be no doubt for all those that are unsaved. They're going to see us changed in, the, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to be changed forever. That means we're going to be um, in our incorruptible bodies. Right? And so, I mean, this, this, uh, <laughs> this idea that we're going going away or something I, it makes no sense at all as soon as the wrath of God is finished then we are placed back down on a new earth All right so when we come back there's not gonna be zombies running around everywhere all right uh, I don't know why people are preaching that unless they just ha have an unhealthy fascination with zombies all right because we see this on the other end of the spectrum too that where people are saying well when Jesus comes back he'll be on earth and will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we're gonna be changed into our incorruptible bodies and we'll be living among zombies 
All right, so that's one viewpoint. The other viewpoint is we're going to be taken away to planet Mars, and we're going to be fitted with our superhero outfits. And then the zombies will just reign on Earth, rule and reign, and you know do zombie stuff. Okay, that's the other. So both of these scenarios are wrong. And the Bible is very consistent all throughout the all throughout. All right. That when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And um, yeah, it from Old Testament to New Testament, every everywhere. Okay, let's. What do I want to look for here? Let's do it this way. Nah, that ain't gonna work. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to find. Yeah, yeah. So even in Daniel, what shall be the end of these things? He's asked the question too. And what he talks about and what Jesus talks about is um, the same thing. There's no contradiction here. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven... He is going to gather together his elect, just like what we read in Genesis 3, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. I mean, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So when we are lifted up, to be with the Lord, he will stomp, stomp the enemy dead forever. And we will be changed. We will have our incorruptible bodies. We will never die. There will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more crying. All those things will be a thing of the past. All right, so I'm. Mean, this is very simple. Should be easy to understand. I can't. I cannot point to these sorts of verses that do not exist. And what happens is these guys here take advantage of people that don't read their Bible. And not only do they take advantage of people that don't read their Bible, but they. Um, they don't understand the Bible themselves. Right? And they're not able to connect the dots. And, you know, just connect the dots like what we read here. Um, let's look for a key word here, the trumpet. Right? <clears throat> that's, the, that's a key word. All right, and if we go to Matthew 24, and we see... Verse 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There should be no mistake about it. Oops. There should be no mistake about it. This is the end of the world. This is it. This He answers the question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He gives the answer about what happens at the very end. And that's when judgment is made. Who is saved and who is not saved? That's the judgment. Alright, that is the great day of the Lord. The end of the world. And what do you think it was, man? Come on. And now think about this. When we're talking about this subject, then you got you got zombie. 1.0 and you got zombie 1.1 I whatever you want to call it you got two different zombie stories that are being taught one is that after Jesus comes we're gonna be put down on earth and we're gonna roam around with zombies and then you got people like this who are teaching well we're gonna be taken away and the zombies are just gonna rule you know roam the earth all by themselves and neither is true when Jesus comes, man, it's crystal clear. 
when he comes, man, it's the end of the world. Right? It could, I mean, well, no, it's not the end. Yeah, it's the end of the world as we know it. 